Yes, yeah, so folks, and welcome to Vasily's Garden. We're at that time of year again where we need to start spraying for leaf kill. Well, a preventative spray to do on our trees. Now, last year we did do it once a month all the way through to early springtime, and I'll explain what leaf kill is in a minute. But I'll explain also what happened because of last year's heavy rains that we had. Leaf kill still infected the tree somewhat, uh, more than I anticipated because of the heavy rains. Now leaf kill, for those who don't know what I'm talking about, is where the new leaves that appear on a plant in springtime start to twist and curl and blister up. They have all these sort of lumps and gnarly looking parts on the leaf, not smooth and clean like this. And that causes uh, a dieback on the tree basically. So leaf kill is quite an infectious a disease that affects the tree from the beginning of autumn. Now why I say that is because as the tree starts to go into its dormant period where it drops its leaves, where the leaf itself meets into the branch, that little open cut there remains open because the sap is not actively flowing as much as it is in springtime. So that is an open wound technically and that's where the spores of this virus or disease enters the plant and travels through and stays dormant until springtime. It also lives on the bark and crevices of the bark and uh, the branches of the tree, so around the base of the trunk and even on the ground itself. Now, I suggest that we spray it at the beginning of autumn rather than late winter, because many in the past, and I too myself inclusive, used to spray the trees once or twice in winter and then a couple of times in springtime and I was still copying or the tree was copying a lot of leaf curl to the point where it affected the fruit. Now it also can cause a lot of dieback so you get the tips of the branches blackening off and it works its way back to the fruit itself where it starts to shrivel up and looks like black brown rot like a really old dehydrated burnt fruit. Now, as the leaf starts to fall this time of the year where we're going into dormancy, it is important that you start your sprays now to seal all those open wounds that are caused by the leaves falling off. And what I use is our disease control pack. There are many other products in the industry, in the markets that you can buy. Some are already mixed together, uh, which is basically hydrated lime and bluestone copper sulfate combined together becomes an oxychloride and that's the fungus side that we create to apply on the tree. We've got this on our website. Uh, we don't distribute this to garden centres as we do with our black grid and all our, our other products. This stuff is only available on our website and it's quite cheap, relatively cheap for the amount of um, spray you get out of it. This little pack here can give you, I think it's about 40, if not 50 litres of solution that you can apply. So this will last you a good year or two if you've only got one or two trees. So we're talking about a spray a month. And this tree here, for example, I've already made a mixture here. It's already settled a little bit. And you should shake it as you spray because it does settle as all dry powders um, will do. Eventually they find them their way back down to the bottom. Couldn't say that, could I? So you need to spray it once a month and a tree like this will chew up probably two litres. I've only got a one litre bottle, this is only for the demonstration, I'll have to fill it again, I'm not going to do it on camera, but I'm going to spray this entire tree. And when we spray the trees, we, we say, or I say, to the point of runoff, and what that means, it's got to be drenched, as when a rain comes through and drenches the tree entirely. Too many times I've known or heard about or spoken to people, uh, gardeners that is, who've sprayed the tree and when I ask them, how have you sprayed it? They say, oh, yeah, I've put a, you know, a litre of spray on the tree. How big is your tree is the question? Well, it's about three metres high, about three metres wide. It just won't be enough. I'll show you what I mean by not being enough and I'm gonna use this entire solution on this one tree at the moment. Now, I use our Easy Hand Sprayer. For those who've got lots of trees, like I have out in the orchard, you need a backpack. You need a 20 litre uh, sprayer or five litre sprayer. That's gonna make it a lot easier. It's got a bit of a pump action on the side of the, uh, uh, the, uh, the tank. Whereas this one here is an easy hand spray. It screws straight onto a drink bottle, any old drink bottle you have, preferably a 1.2 or two two litre. This is, I think, a one litre. And the hose itself that it comes with, that's connected inside, is quite long. And when you get that and you insert it into the bottle, unfortunately you can't see the hose at the bottom. You need to make sure that whatever drink bottle you decide to use on a regular basis, that the hose is not longer than the bottle, so it's not touching the bottom of the bottle, because that's where it will suction cup itself to the base and stop any fluids flowing through to the spray. Now the benefit of this sprayer here, other than the fact that it's such an easy unit, it's like an old flint spray. I'm not pushing hard yet, I haven't adjusted it. You can see I'm just doing it very, very lightly. 
like that. It's got the swivel nozzles, so you can spray upwards, and that's the most important way to spray, up and downwards if you like at the same time. So you've got these two options and you can adjust a close and a far reach. So adjust the spray volume release so you can have a mist coming through and that's still not quite a mist. Here we go, there you go, there's your mist. Look how easy that is. The only thing I suggest that you do is make sure you know which way the wind's blowing because you don't want the camera on the downside because otherwise it'll blow into it. Now today's a calm day and you don't want to be standing on the downside. You can put gloves on, you can put your mask on, put on whatever you want. You put a full PPE suit if you like to be completely protected. It's your decision and keep your friendly pets away from the area as well. Hey Vader, are you going to go that way now? Oh, you're going to sit there and wait to be pat. Okay, look at this. He just waits, wait, wait, wait. All right, and Cara comes along now. This is your segment now. I know this is what happens. We have a little interlude with our puppies for a second, then they go away. All right, back to the tree. So we'll adjust it. I'm going to give it a nice drenching and what I mean by drenching see now how it's dripping that's what I need you to do when you spray it on your tree it needs to be coated completely I haven't completely coated on the other side but we have to move around to do the entire tree like that have a look at the reach on this thing eh? and effortlessly done too I can drench this tree and the benefit of this thing here is it actually gives the tree a good coating. Have a look at this for example. Now with other sprays, those little trigger sprays, yeah, a couple of bucks you buy them, you use them once or twice, they break, whatever. But when you need to spray the tree on the underside, and especially with disease or insect, most times the problems occur on the underside of the leaves. So when it comes to those little hand sprays, that you're holding the bottle like this and you've got a trigger handle there, to get underneath there, you literally got to go underneath like this, under all the leaves. Now this is a tree. Imagine an azalea that's got lace bug, you know, lace wing, which sits on the underside and the azalea bush is only this high. How do you get underneath there like that and do this all the time? You've got to be kidding me. This is the sprayer you need. Honestly, the only sprayer for any home garden is this here on a small size block. If you're not, if you haven't got, you know, 100 trees or 200 trees like we have, you need a bigger sprayer or you can get a nice long hose, about three metre hose, get yourself a bucket and fill it up with the solution and walk away from it and spray your trees because this doesn't work on uh, what do you call it? on on the, uh, what's the word they call it compression it doesn't have to have compression inside it's not it's not a compression chamber it actually works on the pumping action it sucks as you pull and push at the same time so as I pull it pumps out as I push it still pumps out see how effortlessly that is very easy, so no arthritis on the fingers. I could stand back here, adjust it, and spray the tree from the distance. I can literally drench it from here. I'm standing about two meters away, and I'm reaching about three and a half meters high while I'm two meters away from the trunk, or I'm actually four meters away from the trunk, and I can still reach up there. This is what we talk about spraying now. It's not about how far back you can stand on the tree. Well, it is important so you don't get overspray. It's important on how well you can coat the tree or shrub or plant that you're using a solution on to protect. So I've just gone through 70, 70, uh, 700 mils of liquid and I've only done the one side. Now I'm getting underneath. If I tilt it up, I don't have to lean. Look at that, I'm spraying upwards now. Getting onto the underside of the leaves. All the way up and I've only done half the tree. Hence why I say a tree like this needs two litres, folks. At least two litres. Underside again, nozzles are straight up. Make sure you don't put them towards you because you don't want to drench yourself. And then just pump. There we go. The easy hand sprayer, the name says it all. It's an easy hand sprayer and it does the job it's designed to do. Look at that. I've just chewed up one litre and I've still got the back side to go. So, disease control pack, fungicide that you have in your garden shed, go to your local garden centre, get some. Ask for these two at your local garden centres because we are distributing to all garden centres across the states, in Australia that is, even Tassie. And if they haven't got it, get them to give us a call and we'll get some out there to them. Now, it's the one with the long extended nozzle. There are other models which are older models that have a short nozzle, which means this sprayer itself, which comes off so easily, sits right here, right? 
Now, if you're holding the unit, and I like to hold it there, not so much here for better balance, I hold it here, that sprayer is in your way and you're going to get a lot of dribble on your hands. So you've got a better reach with the extended nozzle and they're very inexpensive and very easy to service. Just clean them out, wash them through, take the, the, uh, the hose off, and the only time you get a blockage is if you don't wash it through and you've got a solution like Bluestone, there's a little ball bearing inside there that if I push it down, well, you can't see it, but if it does suck the cup itself or sticks to the opening, you just need a little bobby pin or a paper clip to pop it out again. That's as easy as you need to do, otherwise give it a good clean. Now, leaf curl is a problem. It was a major problem this year. A lot of people lost their trees, especially because of the high rain levels that we had, high volumes of rain and the continuous amount of water. But nevertheless, we still need to continue our reg regimes of sprays. And now is the first time or the first application. So this is first application. I haven't done it at the beginning of the month. It's on the 20th, 21st, whenever we have uh, filmed this. And we're going to repeat it every four weeks or thereabouts, every month on the dot. One good drenching, let it coat. And if you've got enough, but you can see the overspray, how it's already darkened up. I'm not sure if you can tell, but the bark itself has already got a bit of overspray on this. So the fungicide has landed on the ground because the spores do go dormant and hibernate in the bark and, and on the soil and on the tree itself, on the trunk. So drench your trees, peach and nectarine to control leaf curl, cool, because that's what we're going to do with this. And this time, I'm not going to forget to spray my little young trees out in the orchard as well. The disease control pack is available on our website, folks, at a heavily discounted price. Or just simply get yourself one of these easy hand sprayers from the website, and you'll get this absolutely free thrown in as well. It's one of the best, if not the best, sprayer for the home garden. If you haven't got one of these, I don't know what you're spraying your garden with or how effective it is at all. Now, don't forget, the Yarra Valley Plant Fair and Garden Expo is on the 22nd and 23rd of April. Make sure you put that in your diary because I'm going to be there along with many other amazing gardeners and guests as well. Everything you need at VasilisGarden.com from me, Vasili. <laughs> I know I said it too many times. But...